So uh, let's uh, continue students and thank you all for uh, joining again, right? So yes, uh, there are always uh, network issues. So we see that technology, right? Does uh, sometimes also create a little bit of issues although never a problem has never happened before like this, but never mind. Okay, so let's continue here. So who's come? The Iron Master has come and he's, uh, you know, like, yeah, he uh, saw the peddler over there, the tramp lying and immediately went to him and he pulled off his hat. Now, whom does he mistake him to? He thinks him to be somebody else, right? But of course it is you, Niels Olof, he said. How you do look. And he mistakes him to be an old friend of his. The man with the rat traps had never before seen the Iron Master at Ramjo and did not even know what his name was. So he's never seen the Iron Master before and he's wondering that why is he calling me by this name? But it occurred to him that if the fine gentleman thought he was an old acquaintance, he might perhaps throw him a couple of kroner. Therefore, he did not want to undeceive him all at once. Look at him now, how clever he has become. So he thinks that this man thing uh, is saying that he knows him. And he says, okay, fine. If he knows me, very good. Why should I say that I, uh, I don't know you? And he thinks that this person might also give him some more money, right? So he does not want to undeceive him. That means it did not want to tell him the truth, right? So it is that, so once he's fallen into the rat trap, so how things are getting even what you can say more worse for him. So he's falling into that rat trap. Yes, God knows things have gone downhill with me. And yeah, he's keeping up that game, right? Okay, if you know me and he's pretending that he also knows this person. He says, yes, life has not been good. Things have gone downhill with me that I'm not as good as I was before. You should not have resigned from the regiment. And whom does he mistake him to be? He mistakes him to be a soldier that he was served with in the regiment together. You should not have resigned from the regiment, said the Iron Master. That was the mistake. If only I had still been in the service at the time, it never would have happened. Well, now, of course, you will come home with me. And see here how one thing led to another so he's saying you know like not telling him that i don't know you and uh, you have been mistaken but here he is tell you know like yes uh, keeping up that game or right he's also lying to him that my life has really changed and things are not very good and what does the gentleman reply what does iron master reply that uh, you resigned from the regiment and had i been there i would not have allowed that to happen your life would have been different Yes, God knows. Okay, we've read this. Well, now, of course, you will come home with me to go along up to the manor house and be received by the owner like an old regimental comrade. That, however, did not please the tramp. So he was happy till, yes, that I am known to him. He thinks that he knows me. He might give me money to help me out of this uh, terrible, uh, you know, poverty-stricken condition I am in. But he did not expect the Iron Master to go one step further. What was that? Inviting him to his home, right? So he says, no, that I cannot do. Why do you think he was not uh, willing to go home? Because then his lie would be revealed so he's putting up as you know like this uh, false front or he's continuing with the lie for the iron master and if he goes home the truth would be revealed and he did not want that to be happen he would be a cheater he would be there you know like yes falsely uh, implicated or he will be falsely participating in this uh, whole charade no i couldn't think of it he said looking quite alarmed he thought of the 30 kroner. Why doesn't he want to go over there? See how much problems these 30 kroners are now going to create for him. First of all, he did not walk on the road. He went to the forest. He felt he's got lost. He's come to the iron mill. There the iron master has come. The iron master uh, thinks that he's an old friend. He wants to take him home. And if he goes home, they'll find out that he has the money, right? He thought of the 30 kroner. 
to go up to the manor house would be like throwing himself voluntarily into the lion's den. He only wanted a chance to sleep here in the forge and then sneak away as inconspicuously as possible. He says, why is life becoming so complicated? I don't want anything else. I just want to sleep over here. I have 30 kroners with me. And in the morning, I just go away from here. Just like I came here seeking shelter inconspicuously, unnoticed. Sneak away, right? Just like he came very quietly, stealthily. The iron master assumed that he felt embarrassed because of his miserable clothing. So what kind of clothes is he wearing? He's in rags. He's not in proper clothes. So he's thinking that because of his uh, faded, torn clothes, that is why the man is feeling embarrassed. Please don't think that I have such a fine home that you cannot show yourself there. My house is not so big and grand. You're most welcome over there, he said. Elizabeth is dead, as you may already have heard. My boys are abroad. And there is no one at home except my oldest daughter and myself. We were just saying that it was too bad we didn't have any company for Christmas. Now, come along with me and help us make the Christmas food disappear a little faster. So he says, don't worry, I don't have such a big house. As it is there, he's also going through a phase of his life where he is alone. Who is there with him? His oldest daughter. His sons are not there and his wife is no more, right? So he is quite lonely and it's Christmas and he wants that, yes, uh, something should be there and Christmas is the time of sharing, caring, giving, right? So he wants that, yes, you should come home and celebrate Christmas with us. Now come along with me and make, help us make the Christmas food disappear a little faster. But the stranger said no and no and again no. And the Iron Master saw that he must give in. And he's repeatedly saying, no, 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 I can't uh, go with you. I can't accompany you, right? Because he's afraid that his truth will be revealed. He also has stolen 30 kroners. So he is going to be in a big problem, right? It looks as though Captain Von Stahl preferred to stay with you tonight, Sir Strom. Oh my God, what difficult names. He said to the Master Blacksmith and turned on his head. But he laughed to himself as he went away. And the blacksmith who knew him understood him very well that he had not said his last word. So, right, yes. So for the moment, the Iron Master is convinced. You don't want to come home with me? Fine. But he is not going to give up. And the blacksmith who knows him very well that this is not the last word, his master is going to do something else, right? So why was the peddler not ready to go to his house? Because he's not his friend. Whom does the Iron Master think him to be? Captain Von Stahl. So he thinks that he is his old regimental friend. Is that true? No, that is not true. So he has been kind of, you know, like getting a false impression from his appearance. He's mistaking him for somebody else. And the peddler or the rat trap maker, the tramp is not happy going there because his lie would be revealed. He's not his friend. He's a thief who has stolen money from a simple, honest crofter. Okay, right. It was not more than half an hour before they heard the sound of carriage wheels outside the forge. And a new guest came in. But this time it was not the Iron Master. He had sent his daughter, apparently hoping that she would have better powers of persuasion than he himself. So, right, so within half an hour, they heard the sound of the carriage wheels again. Who came? It was not the Iron Master. The Iron Master said that right now there's no one in his family. He's also quite lonely. He's there with his daughter. So his daughter has come and now she is going to make, uh, you know, like a request to the peddler, the tramp to accompany her. She entered, followed by a valet, carrying on his arm a big fur coat. She was not at all pretty, but seemed modest and quite shy. In the forge, everything was just as it had been earlier in the evening. The master blacksmith and his apprentice 
still sat on the bench and iron and charcoal still glowed in the furnace. So things were just the same as they were before, right? Or after the iron master had left, the work was continuing as it was happening earlier. So, right, so the iron and the charcoal, it still glowed in the furnace. The stranger had stretched himself out on the floor and lay with a piece of pig iron under his head and his hat pulled down over his eyes. As soon as the young girl caught sight of him, she went up and lifted his hat. The man was evidently used to sleeping with one eye open, strange habit. He jumped up abruptly and seemed to be quite frightened. So the iron master left without convincing the tramp to accompany him, right? He repeatedly said, no, 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 I can't go with you. So what did the iron master do? He sent his daughter, right? So he sent his daughter to convince him, right? And uh, the blacksmith and the apprentice, they're all doing the work. What are they doing? They're melting the iron in the furnace. So they're all there busy with the work. So work is going on as before. And the tramp here, he's lying down on the floor with a piece of pig iron, you know, like as a support, as a pillow. And the young girl immediately, you know, like, of course, from what her father must have told her, she's recognized him, went up to him, and he's pulled his uh, hat, you know, like uh, to cover his uh, eyes. She lifts it hat, and he has a habit of sleeping with one eye open. He's jumped up abruptly, and he's quite uh, frightened. Now, what is the matter now? Why has this young lady come? My name is Edla Wilmanson, said the young girl. My father came home and said that he wanted to sleep here in the forge tonight. Then I asked permission to come and bring you home to us. I'm so sorry, Captain, that you are having such a hard time. So she said, like she's introduced herself, what is the young lady's name? Edla Wilmanson. And her father told her, that uh, his friend was there, but he was uh, not happy coming home and he wanted to sleep in the porch, right? And so she has asked his permission that can I go and bring your friend home? And you see, she is also addressing him as captain. Her father also mistook him to be his regimental friend. He also called him Captain Von Stahl. She looked at him compassionately with her heavy eyes and then she noticed that the man was afraid. So this young girl, right, she appears to be very modest and very shy, but she is quite smart. She has immediately realized that this man is afraid of something. Either he has stolen something or else he has escaped from jail. So why is he afraid? Stolen something or he's a convict, escaped jail. She thought and added quickly, you may be sure, Captain, that you will be allowed to leave us just as freely as you came. Only please stay with us over Christmas Eve. So you can leave our house whenever you want to. But I just ask you one thing, that please spend Christmas Eve with us. So then let give us a chance also to show, you know, like... Uh, our hospitality and uh, so that we can also you know like uh, spend this uh, festival of christmas with a friend she said this in such a friendly manner that the rat trap peddler must have felt confidence in her it would never have occurred to me that you would bother with me yourself miss i will come at once and the way the girl spoke with so much of confidence and uh, with uh, so much of compassion the peddler is convinced and he's ready to go with her, right? Is he doing the right thing in accompanying the young girl? What do you think? Is he doing the right thing? So he knows that he's lying. He is not the captain. And he's going there to somebody's house. Don't you think his lie would be revealed? Yes? So he is there putting himself in a very dangerous situation, right? He accepted the fur coat, which the valet handed him with a deep bow. See immediately, right? What happened, right? Because he is the guest of uh, the Iron Master. How much respect here? So the valet there bowing to him and uh, followed the young lady out of the carriage without granting the astonished blacksmith so much as a glance. 
So he's gone with them and the blacksmith is very surprised that I did not even reply to him properly. And he's turned out to be a friend of the iron master. But while he was riding up to the manor house, he had evil forebodings, these evil thoughts coming to his mind. What is going to happen? Why the devil did I take that fellow's money? So what is the problem with him? Why is he scared that my lie would be caught? They'll also find out that I have 30 kroners, right? So yes, if they hand me over to the sheriff, so what is going to be ha happening? Like what is going to happen? That his theft would be revealed. So he's saying that, why did I take that money? Now I'm sitting in the trap and will never get out of it. So the favorite metaphor here or the favorite thing that the peddler would love to talk about, this trap would love to talk about was the rat trap. That how everybody sooner or later is going to be in the rat trap. And now he's there. He said, mm -hmm. I am sitting in the trap. I'm stuck here. And uh, it's very going, going to be very, very difficult for me to come out of it. Right? Okay. So now uh, let's uh, see what is going to happen when the man, like this uh, tramp, he reaches the manor house, the house of the Iron Master. What is going to happen? Is he able, going to be able to uh, celebrate Christmas? Will his lie be revealed? How will he come out of the rat trap? Because we're waiting for a happy ending, right? So we are there expecting it to be a fairy tale. So let's see what that happy ending is going to be. Right? So we continue reading in the next period.